All right, hello and welcome everyone. So today we are going to talk about Teardown. So Teardown is a relatively new game that has just come out into early access on Steam. And I think, not to bury the lead at all here, uh, that this is my favorite game so far this year. And it's the beginning of December right now. There are going to be spoilers in this video for equipment and gear you're going to get throughout this game to just kind of show stuff off. So, as a quick rundown for those of you that don't want to be spoiled on anything, this game is a environmental destruction base heist game where you essentially get put into a level and you have to set that level up so that you can do it very quickly and use being able to destroy the environment uh, and build the environment, such as with planks and such, so that you can uh, do things very, very quickly uh, and complete objectives efficiently within a time limit in most cases. Uh, it does a lot of things very, very well. Its controls feel really nice. It looks incredible. Uh, it has a lot going on with the equipment that they give you, and its objectives are built in an incredibly, incredibly tight way. The objectives feel very designed, but there's enough leeway in the objectives that if you don't want to go full optimization on a lot of the much harder levels, that you can complete some of the objectives and still pass the level, and I think feel satisfied, even though I personally have completed like basically everything, um, because it has been such an enjoyable time. That's the, the basic rundown here is that I think this game is even in its early access state, which is literally only 50% of the planned content for this game. I would have been satisfied paying $60 for this game. And uh, this is the price tag for this game. It is much lower than it needs to be uh, for such an incredible experience. So now then, uh, let's get into talking about why it is such an incredible experience. So first of all is... The levels and the way that you are thrust through them so this is your kind of main hub world where you will start the game and we are going to go and do the first mission just to kind of start off on how this game kind of handles itself so you will get into do missions from the laptop here and we are just going to go ahead and go to the very first mission so this old building uh, you are a down-on-your-luck uh, building contractor type man, and you get hired to do a shady job. All they want you to do is lower this house. It is 6.3 meters too tall, and this is an objective marker that you will see multiple times throughout this game, and it is great every time. Also, this is, of course, a tutorial mission, and you don't have a whole ton of uh, tools at your disposal at this point. So we've got a sledgehammer. And they've given us some propane tanks that explode when thrown. So this is great. An absolutely fantastic start. There are tons of explosives in this game. Uh, and also, it's worth noting that this game goes out of its way to try and make levels feel different and items feel different based on the material that they're made out of. So in this case, we have like this refrigerator here and you can right click to grab objects. Uh, so this is a big heavy object, so I can't just fling it around willy nilly. I do kind of have to drag it. But as you can see, it is not like the biggest pain in the world to drag a fridge around. Your character is clearly made stronger so that you can do some ridiculous stuff. And that is super by design and very, very fun. Although, there are some times where objects are going to be extremely heavy, and you will have to figure that stuff out, given the tools that are in any given level. So, for the purposes uh, of this, like, building here, we've got our sledgehammer, which you will always have. And you can just straight up knock the supports out of this building. Like it's, it's too tall. Let's just get rid of the bottom part here. It's just like drywall uh, and wood. What could, what could possibly go wrong? Ah, yes. The big brick chimney, which we cannot crack through. The big brick chimney is the definite problem here. We've got the, these supports knocked out, so we just need to take care of the chimney. In this case, obviously, you were given these explosives. So, you of course should use these explosives. But, this is only, only one 
of many ways to complete this level. Obviously, this level can be done uh, in a variety of ways. And if you look around us a little bit harder, there are vehicles. So this game gives you access to pretty much every single vehicle you can see. I don't think I encountered any vehicles I could not drive. And they actually go into it and, like, give you a lot of control. So on, like, I have control of the shovel, how high I want it, which is, like, great for leveling things in a specific way. Got, like, good brakes and stuff. And you can kind of just drive through things in most cases um, because it's a big honking vehicle. So in this case, I've got this big bulldozer and uh, this chimney's got to go. And the interesting thing here is that not only are like the environments and things you need to destroy destructible, but also kind of everything. So this vehicle, whenever I do this, the house is going to start to tumble. It's still too tall because it's like still standing a bit. So we're going to put this up here and you can see that like the front of this vehicle has been destroyed. And like there's going to, there's a lot of stuff in this game that plays with uh, destroying every single thing. Like, the, the physics kick in whenever objects are, like, detached from where they're supposed to be. Like, it's it's super, super fun to just go for it and destroy things. Uh, which is going to be in a good port, uh, a good, you know, a lot of the levels are going to have that stuff. So, you do it, you destroy the whole thing in, in whatever way you kind of want to. And some of the levels are going to go down like this. Now, with that being done, you get to your vehicle. This is, like the very base level of stuff you can do in this game. And I think it looks and feels great to do. The destruction, super, super fun. Now, however, let's move on to kind of a mid-game level where we're going to have some more complex objectives and restrictions, and I can kind of show you how that tends to go down. Okay, so here we are at a kind of mid-game-ish mission. Uh, this is the GPS devices mission. So, this sends us to the marina level, which you will see multiple times, uh, as it is a big sprawling level, and they, they change things as you come back to here, uh, like time of day and events and obviously objectives. So, this is a nice big level to take a look at. So, because the levels are repeated, sometimes there are certain things that are always going to be in a level, like, for example, this nice big bridge here. You can raise the bridge or lower the bridge as you would like to do, and this gate is pretty much always going to be here. And for me, I found this gate to be annoying. Luckily, because of the destructible environment stuff, I can just take this blowtorch and get rid of this. And then take this and just move it. Now, any vehicles I would want to drive through here don't need to wait for the gate to go through. I can just plow on through and go on about my business. As a bonus, whenever you cut objects like this out of the environment, they can just straight up be turned into uh, other useful items. So like in this case, this big flat piece here, I can just turn into a ramp. It takes a little finagling, but it's just a ramp. Like, if I need to get over a specific wall, boom, there we go. Easy done. And, like, that's incredibly useful. And, like, the versatility of a lot of the vehicles, like, say, for example, this one. Uh, we've got, like, a big hook on this one. So, like, if I need this in, like, a much higher, higher spot, grab onto this, pull it up. Like, I can have this be much taller up here uh, and do back up a little bit here, the way I would actually set this up. Now it's, like, balanced on here using the vehicle, uh, and then I can modify that with an item you'll get a little bit later on in the game, which is planks. The so planks into this, run up the whole thing, get to, like, the third floor of a building, just doing all kinds of creative, interesting stuff with the environment and just being able to piece it together however you want. Really, really cool. There's tons of opportunity for that here. Uh, but let's look at the objectives for this level. So first of all, before we look at the objectives, extremely, extremely good map system. I love the way that it zooms in and out and like it's the actual level. Uh, this is literally just the level. It's not a map of it. You can zoom way in on it and see like exactly how things are set up. It's really, really helpful because you're going to be constantly changing your environment and needing to see exactly how things are positioned. So having a map that is hyper real time, very, very helpful with that. Uh, so on this mission, the GPS devices, we are going to steal GPS devices, shocker, I know, uh, from Lee's boats and get the log files from the harbor office. The security systems in place are wired alarm boxes and breaking an alarm box or wire triggers the alarm. So 
Uh, also, there's a, a last path, uh, best path function on here, which I did not know about until I came back into this level because I was going through this level very meticulously and kind of trying to perfect every every level uh, as I uh, went through the game. But this is a really neat function as well that's here. So anyway, we have three primary targets and two secondary targets. We have the log files in the office, the boat trailer, and the fishing boat itself. So those three are required for you to complete the mission, but bonus points if you get the boat and boathouse GPS devices. So the secondary targets, the primary targets are important. There is a sort of, uh, for, for lack of a better comparison point, Angry Birds-like star system for getting all of the objectives in a level, and you're going to get rewards and new tools based on being able to do more objectives per level. So you're gonna get new cool stuff faster, uh, like the planks, um, like upgrades, just much quicker if you're able to do more objectives. So there's actually a really, really good incentive to do that stuff. And it felt really rewarding across the entire game to do it. So let's do what you do at the beginning of one of these missions. Scope out the objectives. First and foremost being this one here in the shed. So it's always important to examine the objective and just see how you're going to be able to make an objective easier. So in this case, um, this boat is just hanging in here. And because it's just hanging in here, these ropes on these wooden posts, that's not going to be too difficult to get rid of. We can just very simply knock on this, but it's made of metal. Well, easy solution. Our blowtorch can cut that right off. Cut one off. Cut two off. And we'll get the others. And the final one. Jump up into the boat here. There we go. So, now with the boat detached, we can actually pick this up and drag it wherever we want. But before we do that, I want to show off kind of how this works. So, these alarm boxes can't be detached in any way from their original object. Uh, and the wire can't be detached in any way from its original object. There are a number of cases where you can actually kind of stretch the wire a little bit um, from the target itself which is really, really useful and able in like just saving you a couple of feet uh, on your travel back to the objective. And that's really important because, well, quick save real quick. When you pick up this target, you have 60 seconds to complete all of your objectives and get out. And that is a very, very tight time frame. This game does their objectives in such a way uh, as to make you have to think about them. And there are a couple of very hard levels where if you're going for completing all of the objectives, I have not seen solutions to them that give you any more than even two seconds of clearance doing it in very, very efficient ways. Um, so it's really tightly made. It's really thought about and feels heavily constructed to be interesting and really fun to puzzle out for yourself. In this case, this is one of the earlier missions, so it goes a lot it goes a lot easier on you. In this case, we can just drag this boat out of this house. Why detach it from the alarm when we can just take the alarm with us? That's obviously the simple solution here. So we have uh, this boat with this alarm here, and we can't grab this objective yet. But what we can do is take it back over here to our escape vehicle. And now, whenever the end of our route would naturally be this escape vehicle, this objective is already here, making it very, very easy for us to grab and go, as it were. So, super great level has been optimized on the first step. So, levels basically consist of you chaining together these types of objectives and just doing it in a smart way. Uh, so, there is one other objective on this level that I just have foreknowledge of that we can move, which is right here, or there's actually two more technically, uh, where this truck has this boat on a trailer and we can just drive that to essentially the same spot. And then we also have this big boat that can also be driven around uh, that makes things a little more complicated. But one of our stationary objectives that I can kind of show off over here is in this house. So uh, you can, of course, just kind of peruse around and look through a level. And also uh, a nice thing about exploring the levels is that there are rewards in the levels. I've gone through and picked up the vast majority of them. Uh, but there are valuables in each level that are going to give you cash that you can use on upgrades for your items. So it's actually really worth looking around, like going up, like looking behind dressers and like opening up refrigerators, which I believe I can open this one. I guess I can't open this one. Unfortunate. But yeah, there's there, there's like different like cabinets you can open and stuff often in levels. Uh, not in this case, I guess, but 
there's areas where you're going to get into where you're going to find stuff that gives you money so it, it's very worth exploring all like the different buildings and stuff they give you uh on each level so in this case i believe it's in here i guess not Let's look here it's in the back room so in this case we have this objective in the back room so this is attached to this wall if this gets detached from the wall alarm goes off so you don't it's not only if you pick this up if this wall gets broken in any way alarm goes off so this objective is a very stationary objective i have just a little bit of wiggle room here because i could pick this up and kind of use the wire to my advantage and get like maybe the extra couple feet of distance that i need but like this is gonna be in this room one way or another so it's all about figuring out how we could do this faster so in this case oh hey there's a valuable i missed speak of the devil nice uh so in this case why should we go through all these hallways let's just go straight through this building also another item that you're gonna get is straight up a shotgun so if you don't like what's in front of you just get rid of it wouldn't it be much faster instead of going through this whole building to just walk straight like grab this objective and walk straight out absolutely that's optimization and then from here obviously you can just go around uh the side here uh and do all this kind of business but there's always pretty much further ob uh, further optimization to go through these levels if you're planning on grabbing that and then just jumping out of here you can take some boats and like screw them across this and just make it a straight line as opposed to going around the edge of the shore there's a, a lot of options in the levels because they, they give you enough stuff to incentivize you to do that first of all uh and you just also just have the ability to do all that stuff so we've got this very fast boat here we are going to use this to jump up on to this boat which is also tied up at the shore so this being tied up here we can solve that problem pretty easily with a shotgun it is no longer tied down and we should be able to just jump right up onto here there we go so this is also attached here uh and also these that are on vehicles usually they're fully attached to the vehicle i can't just blow this out from under it and then carry this whole big block over although that would be very cool uh there are some restrictions on a lot of these basically this whole boat's got to get moved oh ooh. but if we don't think about things carefully we may put ourselves in a very bad position especially when there's an additional anchor to be uh detached here you don't want to be uh driving away on an anchored boat because that will inevitably destroy your whole boat so we know that our objective is up in that greenhouse uh where we are going to need to grab that for sure for sure and we also know that we have another objective that is over here on this boat and if we just zoom in here we can actually see that it's connected to the shoreline so this boat's not going to be able to move just much closer to our objective so thinking about that the route that i did initially for this level is that i would grab this first and then go around here grab the boat and then get all three objectives in a line this way that leaves the bridge here in front of us which initially i did not realize you could just raise this bridge and i plowed through it nearly sinking this boat and that was foolish but feel free to try it on your own uh, but if we just pull up close to this we can simply jump over we will raise the bridge and jump back which is really really cool and just just using the level in smart ways feels just oh, very very nice and from here set this up so that we have this objective here and now we will be able to essentially take that boat crash it into this one jump up grab this jump off here uh, and then grab this objective and head out but there is another objective that we need to grab as well we will lower this bridge again and head over here Yeah, th this game just does ev everything in its power. Also, it looks great. Like, the visuals here like is a voxel-based game. Uh, the lighting looks incredible. Uh, I have heard that it doesn't run uh, super great on lower-end systems. Like, it's still runnable, but it's 
much much harder on it and some of that i think is going to be due to just early access because that is the way it goes uh but it is a very very nice looking game especially in some of the later levels they do a lot of crazy stuff with effects that i could uh see being very taxing for some machines there's a lot of uh a lot of fire and such that goes into it Oop, there we go whoopsies that's fine we don't need that part of the boat anyway that part of the boat was just holding us back so we can take this truck here and also uh a really cool thing here is that this truck is one of the nicer vehicles that i really enjoyed in the game so the cool thing we're going to be able to do here is actually take this we're going to back it up right over here so we've got this in line with our escape route and then because i would like to use this truck i can just cut off the trailer and now I'm free of the trailer. The objective is in the right spot and I can utilize this in my routing. So if we have this, probably don't want this blue car in our way. We can just send this careening into the water. Goodbye. And we've got this very nice red truck here. So now I would of course like to get to this red truck as cleanly as possible from this upstairs objective. So the path that we built earlier is not what I'm going to end up using, and that's fine because you don't lose any points for destroying more stuff. Uh, so if we wanted to get out of this building through here, essentially, because we know that our truck is right down there, we can very simply break this out. And this is the thing you can just do with a sledgehammer. Uh, there are a bunch of other tools that you can get with this. Uh, that we are going to show off a little bit here. You get like pipe bombs, the gun, just regular bombs. You get rockets much later in the game. Like there's there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, so we are just going to use some of that just to show it off. So our objective's right there. We need a straight line kind of right here. So these bombs are a little, little heavy on the explosive side. So we are going to save before we do it, which is nice. And pop this open. With that, we have a, a much clearer path to our hole in the wall. Here, we can kind of do the same. Oh, but there's a reason they give you a fire extinguisher because sometimes the building tries to burn down. Uh, and a number of levels also have fail states where there is a fire alert that can go off like this one does. Oh my. Wait, nope, nope, no, no. Also, I think the fire extinguisher effect is, is super fun and looks great. Uh, also, also on top of that, if you need uh, even more help with the planning and stuff, oh, we're going to get this off of our objective. Uh, there is also a spray can. So this is really useful because there are kind of like destruction time-based objectives. So in a lot of cases, you can give yourself a route, like you can plan it out in advance and be like, okay, the, the driving line that I need to be on is this because I need to take this curve this way. Uh, and I can like set this circle, like this is where I need to break and do cool stuff like that. Like being able to just draw on everything is super useful also because you all wanted it anyway moving on moving on to our objective i think we are ready to give this a shot obviously we did not check out one of our objectives uh but i have foreknowledge of it so i think we're ready to give it a go so quick save let's try this thing out see if it's optimized enough to get it done in 60 seconds I believe it is. The truck with the nice handling that I like gets us here really quickly. Pop out. We've got a quick save if it doesn't work out. We'll rip this off of here. Make sure we grab it. Grab it off here. Back of this boat, back of this boat, and we're gone. A really nice setup, efficiently done mission. Time left, almost 30 seconds. Uh, it does this really cool thing at end of mission where it just gives you your route. You can see we followed that line actually pretty closely there. Uh, and then like where you jumped out of your car, you get into the boat. The one thing about this that I wish it did was like the full like actual replay itself, I guess, where like it's showing the vehicles move and everything. Um, but honestly, 
it's really cool regardless to kind of have this uh, Breath of the Wild path style thing to show you the exact route that you took uh, and where you might be able to improve your time. So that's kind of how one of like the mid-level missions of this goes. This game is just, just absolutely stellar. I would advise anyone who likes puzzling or destruction or, or really just really tight, feel-good gameplay to try this game out. It is one of the best games I've played in like the past couple of years, and it really deserves more attention straight up. Uh, at the end of this video, which is coming up here, I am going to put in some clips uh, of some runs that I was really, really happy with. Uh, and like, I felt like they were just really tight levels. They were missions that I did for like sometimes hours for the really, really hard ones. Uh, and it felt like getting the route down was essentially like learning my own speed run. Uh, and it was, it's just satisfying and just feels great to play. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Check out Teardown. It's on Steam uh, at your earliest convenience. If you don't want to be spoiled on the levels, now is the time to jump off. Uh, I appreciate everyone who's still watching, and I will see you next time.